We can go on to the public hearing now. Um, it's uh, 441, so it's, it's, it's all right to begin again. Mr. Attorney, um, when we were did when we did the, the the one person before, you did not make the comments that you should make, sir. Will you do them now? Uh, yes, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I will summarize the procedures governing today's public hearing. Pursuant to School Board Policy 0169.1, the purpose of the public hearing portion of the board meeting is to allow the public to address general matters within the board's jurisdiction and not for resolving individual grievances or disputes. The board will not take official action on any public hearing presentation, but staff may be requested, if appropriate, to take a speaker aside and respond to his or her concerns. Although the purpose of the public hearing is to receive public comment and participation, the purpose is not served when citizens become disorderly or disruptive. In order to maintain order and decorum during the public hearing process, the board has established decorum policies. The intent of these policies is not to regulate speech or the content thereof, but to ensure the orderly progress of the public hearing. Accordingly, the speaker's remarks should be directed to the chair or the board as a whole, and speakers shall not address individual board members. Personal attacks are prohibited and may result in the interruption or termination of a speaker's remarks. In accordance with board policy, speakers are prohibited from discussing their own pending court cases legal claims or complaints filed against the district or district personnel as there are other forums established for those purposes. Similarly, employees are prohibited from discussing disciplinary matters involving indivi any individual school board employee. In accordance with school board policy, substitution for sub scheduled speakers shall not be allowed except in exceptional circumstances. Speakers may not use any form of profanity or loud or abusive comments. Intentionally disruptive clapping, heckling, or verbal outburst in support uh, or opposition of a speaker's remarks are prohibited. Speakers whose comments go beyond the subject matter of public education, who address matters that are not related to the business of the school district, or who makes personal attacks or impertinent or slanderous remarks, or otherwise engages in boisterous behavior which creates a disturbance or disruption, may be ruled out of order and may be warned that they must confine their comments to the matters related to the school district. Campaigning and electioneering on public radio and television are prohibited. Speakers who persist in violating the board's decorum policies may be asked to yield the podium and have the microphone turned off and will not be permitted to continue to address the board. I would like to finally remind the public speakers that pursuant to board policy 0169.1, Individuals who are allowed three minutes to address the board during the public hearing, but no more than a total of 10 minutes during the entire meeting. The green light at the speaker's podium signals three minutes, the yellow light signals 30 seconds remaining, and the red light signals that speakers have exhausted their time. Speakers may not refuse to yield the podium when the chair has advised that, her, that their time have ex has expired. Speakers who wish to provide additional comments beyond the 10 minutes allowed may provide written comments to the board clerk for inclusion in the record for this meeting. Uh, Madam Chair, that, that summarizes the procedures for the conduct of the public hearing. Thank you, Mr. Harvey. Uh, we will commence with the first speaker, Carla hernandez Matz. Good evening. Good evening, Madam Chair, school board members, and Mr. Superintendent. I stand before you today to elevate the great work that some folks in our community are accomplishing. Every year we hold an education gala where we acknowledge the contributions of members in our community on behalf of children. But there are others who deserve this recognition and I think this forum should be a place for people to hear some of the positive things that these individuals have done for children. I'd like to start off by giving a special words of appreciation to Dr. T. Holloway. Dr. Holloway has been a staunch advocate that has time and again shown his genuine commitment to public education and the children in his community. He has been a dedicated public servant at the state and local levels and understands the importance of continuity and leadership. He has consistently advocated for real solutions facing our community. When you deal with Dr. Holloway, you know that he is going to live up to his word because he is and has always been an upstanding citizen. I'd also like to acknowledge Ms. Luby Navarro. 
Ms. Navarro has built a career on behalf of responsible and ethical government. She has spent over 20 years in public service in both Tallahassee and Miami-Dade County. As a product of Miami-Dade County Public Schools, she understands the special needs that our community has. She has been a strong supporter of our educators and students. Ms. Navarro has been an advocate for providing programs that meet the needs of all students. From those uh, headed to our nation's military ac academies to students going directly into our workforce. Thank you, Ms. Navarro. And speaking of advocates in our community who have a record of service for families in our community, I'd like to also acknowledge Mr. Modesto Abetti, the former president of and CEO of the Children's Trust. He has exemplified commitment to our children. Mo Abetti's life work has been to ensure our children have the resources yes. to succeed through his work with I'm the sorry, Children's duty. Trust. He has I'm earned the trust of parents, Ms. advocates. Matt, I'm sorry, but I think the attorney is want to say something. Yes, through the chair, uh, just the use of names. Uh, I, I know there's uh, a policy that we have under consideration, but there is mention of uh, individuals' names, and that should be at least regulated for the time being. So uh, I just advise the speakers to limit their comments in the use of names. Thank you very much, Mr. Harvey. Thank you very much. So this, this last um, appreciation is for um, a board member that I'm, uh, unfortunately I cannot mention her name. But she has been uh, you know, focused on the needs of our school students and teachers. And for those who don't know her, when she dedicates herself to a cause, she becomes a fierce advocate. Uh, these qualities were seen in her determined work to force the Value Adjustment Board to meet the, me the needs of Miami-Dade County students and to put the needs of those children above politics. Thank you, ma'am. The members of this board have been leaders in our community, and the United Teachers of Dade appreciates the dedication and work of each of you on behalf of students. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes, Ms. Castillo. Um, I would like to point out that this is starting, this previous speaker was um, sounding more political than a, an issue for the school board. And uh, as a board member, I would like to request that we don't entertain these, these speakers for that purpose, because this is a school board meeting for school board issues mm -hmm. and not for a campaign solicitation or how, speaking about a campaign or any other candidate or anything like that or political forum. Um, in addition, the attorney just read in the rules that names should not be used, mm -hmm. and this is exactly what was done by this previous speaker. So if we can just keep that uh, in our forefront as we go along with the public speaking, I would really appreciate it. Thank you, Ms. Thank Castillo. You, I really, uh, and I'm the one that always enforces the board rule of 169.1. The, uh, the, the confusion, at least for me, became when uh, the speaker started mentioning one name. I thought it had to do a celebration in a school I was not listening completely. I thought the, the purpose of the name was something that had taken place in the school. And of course, once uh, something like that happens, then uh, it became, um, it was af after you allow one, then it was difficult not to allow the other. So you are absolutely right. I am the one that enforces not to do that. But it became something that I was not paying that much attention in the beginning. And again, I thought it was going to be something about a specific school. I never thought it would have to do anything with politics. And you're absolutely right. Thank you. Yes, Madam Chair, Dr. Bender's minute off. Yes. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, is that something that uh, our attorney might want to chime in on, or is everything OK? OK. Yes, through the chair. I think it was handled appropriately. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Ms. Regalado. Uh, just, I want to thank Carla for, for, for coming down. Um, um, you know, we, we get to talk about UTD and we'll be talking about it more um, as our uh, budget starts, but I just want to take the opportunity, uh, whether people agree or not, that it's great to have you here at our meetings. So I want to thank you, uh, and I don't want to. I don't want you to think that any conversation that happens uh, up here would change that. We really appreciate having your presence at our committee meetings and having your presence here uh, and having you weigh in on these topics. So, thank you. Thank you. 
Yes, Dr. Holloway, sir. Uh, Madam Chair, I, I, for the record, I just want to say I was taken off, caught off guard. Um, not that it was wrong in my, my sight. I just, I, when my name was called and someone was saying something good about me, I, I was, didn't know what was happening. <laughs> so, you know, I, I want to say thank you uh, as, as best I can. And um, I, I don't know how we're going to deal with it. I understand the political nature of the, of the uh, comments that were made. Uh, and I, I want to encourage kind remarks being made for everyone. Uh, and thank you for stepping out there to make the remarks, uh, but to hear that there are some restrictions that I'm sure you will look at it going forward. So thank you so very much for the kind remarks. <laughs> Again, even though I think I think I pay a lot of attention to everything that goes on, uh, this I did not. Uh, so um, unfortunately, Matt, Matt. but the board member has uh, every right to complain about it, and uh, certainly the board rule it is what it is, mm -hmm. and I accept the uh, complaint and I certainly apologize for it. Right. Thank Madam you. Yes, the, the Ms. Navarro wanted to say something. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I too uh, wanna say follow uh, Dr. Holloway's comments and thank you for being here at our board meeting and what you represent, Ms. Carla Matz, um, on behalf of all of our teachers. So thank you for the beautiful comments and um, like the board chair said, we have board rules, but I appreciate your comments. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Ms. Castillo and Dr. Bear as well. Thank you, Madam Chair. And I, I didn't intend that to be anything directed to the UTD or to you, Ms. Matz. We really appreciate appreciate that you're here. And quite honestly, I think when I was um, when I was talking about those points, obviously you were talking about school board members, so that's school board related issues. When you went on to speak a, about somebody who had nothing to do with the school board and is running for an, for office, is where I felt that it was mostly inappropriate. Um, so thank you again for the work that you do. I mean, I know you do a lot for, for our teachers and we really appreciate it. And congratulations on being president. I think you're doing a wonderful job. Thank you. And Dr. Barrett's words? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, for, uh, this has nothing to do, of course, with Ms. Ma uh, Ms. Uh, Carla being here. And um, it is my, my particular position, not as the school board's position, but my particular position is that People should be able to use our names, and people should be able to say what they would like to say, if respectfully. I've been called all kinds of things that, you know, people come here, and that's part of what we do. We, we sit here, and we didn't, you know, we, we wanted to be elected, so fine if a person wants to use my name in good or bad. So that's my particular position. That being said, if we say, names cannot be used, then if it's good for the goose, it's good for the gander. If we can't use it when we don't like it, mm -hmm. you can't use it when we like it either. So I must say that I was, um, I think that, uh, that we cannot allow the names to be used, for, especially during a political time here, because the board has agreed to this rule that I don't agree with. So, that I, I, and you know I don't, and I have said it throughout the years that I've been, not, throughout the years that it has been applied. So, um, I wanna thank though, uh, Carla for being here and for um, always speaking out on things. And by the way, um, I hope that uh, when the FPNL commission, when they come, uh, uh, back in town that we're able to have the UTD and the UTD representation there because it's going to represent seven million dollars uh, for us. So um, so I hope that we can get our teachers out there to tell the, the board the impact that they will that this will have on them. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Regalado. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to miss you, Martha. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to miss your candor. <laughs> 
but, but for the record, uh, I've always thought that's a stupid rule too. Uh, so I mean, I, I think that, and I've said this before, we've agreed on this point. Um, I, I think that those of us that are up here are fair game. Um, I think the rule is more about disparaging teachers and employees and administrators that can't defend themselves outside of this forum. I mean, any of us could, you know, um, call the media and defend ourselves, right? We're elected officials. I believe we signed up for this. Uh, this is part of the rules of engagement of what we do, right? But, uh, but I just, you know. Uh, it, it's it's always interesting when the when the issue comes up, but I, I know and I know it's always difficult to navigate it. And for those that are listening or watching us, I just wanted to to point out this this um, the nuance of it. You know, until people start talking, we have no idea for the most part what they're going to say in public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, so God bless the chair uh, for her patience, right? Because we you you know we look to the people might be wondering why do you keep looking to the attorney? Why are they all looking at each other? Well, you know because we can't just step. In. So, um, it, you know, um, I think that um, given the nature of it, handled very well, you know, we know what the rules are. Uh, and I want to thank the chair for, for her indulgence uh, in all of this. Uh, public hearing is always the most interesting part of our meetings just because of the randomness of it. Um, and we'll, we'll try to keep it short for T's sake. Thank you, Major Valado. Dr. Feldman, sir. Thank you, thank you. This way we all get. Um, so I think this is why, Mr. Attorney, you're going to look at that particular item. And you're going to come back to us and take in all of the things that we have said, thought, or you've heard mm -hmm. in terms of whether names should or shouldn't be used, whether we can or cannot clap, whether the decorum would be upset if we do certain things. And when you do come back, um, I hope that, that your rulemaking decisions um, in fact, will speak to the essence of what we do and not about people, which I don't think you would. I appreciate what um, the union has done for all of us. Uh, it goes without saying that without our teachers, um, we would not be um, in the same boat that we are with all of our kids doing well. Um, let me just say this. Um, it is very difficult during, during it's very difficult for folks to um, not be able to say and talk about sides when you're publicly um, sitting up here. I understand the ability and the, and the desire from those that approach us. Having said that, it puts all of us in a very difficult position. I hope that whoever's listening understands that either silence is not acqu uh, acquiescence or agreement, um, or that we're speaking about uh, anyone um, from the union, or very carefully put, there is no intent to discredit one side or the other. People just need to understand that while you're sitting up here, it is difficult and there is a different level of expectation uh, by the public. Thank you. Um, thank you, Dr. Feldman. Um, Mr. Attorney, I think you have your hands full now um, so. with your item and with the new policy and what you heard the board saying and the conversation, I think it will change. Um, the only thing that I... Um, believe um, that in your legal opinions that uh, I have read, not only yours, but the, the other two attorneys that you uh, asked to render legal opinions was regarding um, board members. So I think uh, the perception that if the rule is changed, I think um, staff, whether it's principals, teachers, or everyone else, would uh, certainly be allowed to be name, names. I never read any legal opinion of the two constitutional attorneys that you had uh, um, provided to me had any uh, mention of that, that uh, members of staff could not, um, names could not be mentioned. Uh, again, the board um, adopted the 0169.1 um, but uh, I, I want to make sure that everyone understands 
that the only um, rec recommendation from the two constitutional attorneys is about board members. It, it excludes any member of staff. So that would be then, um, if it's changed, which it probably will, um, make sure that you understand that it doesn't exclude principals or teachers or anyone else. I just wanted to put that on the record. Thank you very much. I, Madam Chair, I think that, yes, your, your recommendation to the uh, school board attorney is a good one because it's my understanding that, you know, that particularly in public forums, you know, the, you know freedom of speech is uh, a, an absolute right. So I hope that he does come back and give what has been given to us before but we haven't been following, which is that um, in particular, in a public forum, the freedom of speech is uh, guaranteed. Thank you. I will have ample time to discuss that when I think the one that brings the rulemaking is the superintendent. Right, Mr. Hardy? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, That's what your item said, sir. Yes. Uh, I'm only repeating what I read. Yes, ma'am. And um, just for the record, uh, just just to tell you how the process would work. Now that the item has been uh, approved, I will bring back uh, recommendations if, if, if desired to the next uh, school board committee meeting. And at that point, part of the item would suggest revisions, perhaps, and also part of the item would uh, obviously authorize the superintendent to initiate rulemaking. Um, so, uh, if those changes to the policy are, are being recommended, then that will be part of the item. I think that's pretty much what I asked, said. I yes, think what I said is that the superintendent, according to your item, is the one that initiated rulemaking. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Castillo. Thank you, Madam Chair. I appreciate you giving me another opportunity. And Mr. Attorney, um, my main concern, if you can include that in your policy recommendations, was that we not use the school board public hearing as a political campaign or for any political purposes or campaign purposes. If you can include that, I would, I would appreciate it. I don't know about the rest of the board. Thank you. Um, well, one never knows here what uh, something can trigger a long discussion, but that's always um, interesting. Um, Antonio White. 